Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wolf Packer Show. My name is Ethan McDowell, and I am here with Noah Fleischman. We are back for our second show of the week because it is that time of the year, folks. We are preparing for the 2024 football season. If this is your first episode in a while, we are going through every position for NC State football. We're talking about reasons why we're optimistic, reasons why we're pessimistic. We're going to go and project the two deep and answer some listener questions as well. So far, we've done episodes on the quarterbacks and the running backs. So if you haven't watched those yet, go check them out on our YouTube channel or any podcast platform. And um, if you have, thank you for watching and listening. And today we're going to talk about the receivers. Um, again, another group where there was a ton of overhaul. Right right before we you know, pressed record, we were going through the list. And um, it is a long list of folks that um, left the program and then they're bringing them in. So we're going to break all of that down. But before we do so... Just a quick housekeeping note that we're both writers for thewolfpacker.com. If you are not already a member of thewolfpacker.com, right now it's only $1 to join for um, premium access to our message board, to recruiting scoops. Um, it's going to be a busy July 4th for NC State on the recruiting trail. Two priority recruits making their decisions today. Another um, top, top priority recruit making their decision tomorrow. We've got the latest intel on them on thewolfpacker.com, so go check that out. And, um, you know, team analysis, more detailed preview stuff. We're going to answer a couple of listener questions on the show today. The rest of them, we answer in a mailbag every week. So go check it out there. Only $1 for your first month. That takes you from now and through the first few days of fall camp. Where we're going to have so much awesome content from, you know, it's still commitment season for recruiting. We're going to have all this preview stuff. And it's ACC Media Day at the end of the month. So, so much going on. Well worth the $1. Go check it out on thewolfpacker.com. All right, Noah. Let's talk about some wide receivers. A position group that I think it's safe to say left some to be desired last season outside of Kevin Concepcion. Um, obviously, a superstar. KC was the ACC's Rookie of the Year. Um, All-ACC selection. Freshman All-American, the list goes on and on and on. He was dominant. Outside of him, um, the production was pretty limited. Uh, you know, Casey accounted for 32% of NC State's receptions last year. When the offseason began, the pack addressed that immediately, Noah. They hit the portal. They brought in talented players. They brought in probably the best wide receiver class in program history out of high school. So the room looks completely different right now. Um, I'm going to hand over the reins here to Noah to give you all the rundown because, Noah, there are a lot of new names to keep track of in this room. There are. When you look at – when you compare this year's roster to last year's roster, big turnover at the wide receiver position. It was a need going into the offseason. Of the room a year ago, six guys that caught a pass are gone. They either graduated or transferred. Keon the same, Bradley Rosner, both done from college football. Terrell Timmons will hit the portal. Julian Gray, Porter Rooks, um, Anthony Smith, all gone in the transfer portal. Left open a lot of space for NC State to go and, and, and grab some guys. And, and, and boy, did they. I mean, we'll start in the transfer portal, what they got there. They did well. They got Wesley Grounds from Wake Forest. Noah Rogers from Ohio State, obviously a former five-star recruit. You know, he's a big, big-time get. We'll talk more about him in a little bit. Then you talk about these high school guys. Jonathan Paylor. Basically, Kevin Concepcion 2.0, maybe. I don't know. We'll talk about more. But, you know, he, he's a do-it-all guy. Keenan Jackson, they flipped from North Carolina. You just keep going down the line. You've got Tank Boston, who went back and forth from wide receiver and corner throughout spring ball. He's at back at receiver. And then Trail Anderson, probably the highest rated wide receiver they've gotten in the last 20 years out of the high school ranks. So, Ethan, big-time turnover of this room. They kept Kevin Concepcion, obviously the best player on the team last year, a year ago, back for his sophomore year. And he's surrounded by a ton of talent. And Dave Dorn is excited about this talent, basically told us, hey, there's no more opposing defenses. Can't say, where's number 10 and, and let everyone else go. If they do that, it's going to be a long day for the defense. If you don't do that, Kevin Concepcion can still, can still break the team down defensively. So it'll be fun to watch this year. But overall, heck of a job by by Joker Phillips and in the recruiting department. Yeah, the phrase that um, Coach Dorn used with us was competitive depth, right? Um, and he acknowledged that, you know, throughout the offense, they didn't really have that at times last year. They do now. Like, they're, like you said, you can't just 
structure your whole game plan around KC. We have to emphasize that. KC was the like 95% focus of every defensive game plan last year because he was that good and he was getting the ball, you know, that consistently in that many ways that um, defense is really not only had to worry about him, but primarily he was the focus. So this year, if you do that, you have Noah Rogers on the outside. You have, um, you know, Paler in the tight end room on the on the other side on the slot. If you go four wide, I there there are so many more playmakers around the pack this year, and there's a lot of reason to be excited. Let's break down the two deep, man. Um, the obvious one is KC. He's going to start in the slot. Um, no mystery there. He is the face of NC State's program right now. He is a superstar. Um, last year, for as a reminder, he caught 71 passes. Um, Noah, Keon Lassane was second on the team in receptions, and he got 28. So that, that's a good illustration of how much of the offense really truly revolved around KC. Um, he racked up 839 receiving yards. It's an average of 11.8 yards per reception and caught 10 touchdowns. Um, just super productive. He's a superstar. Had, I think it was, what was it, four games with um, – two touchdowns or something like that, three or four? Yeah, he uh, he didn't – it was five games with two touchdowns. He didn't have a game where he scored just once. He, he, he They came in pairs. And once he scored once, he came in a running joke at one point between the two of us. When he scored once, you knew that another one was coming in the game. But, yeah, five multi-touchdown games. Not a bad freshman year at all. Yeah. So, you know, it, going against, like, maybe the, you know, common train of thought, I actually don't think we're going to talk a ton – about Casey in this episode, just because everyone knows how special he is as a player, right? Um, we want to spend the rest of it talking about everyone else. So yeah. on, on the outside, right now I have the starters penciled in as Noah Rogers, the former five-star recruit, local superstar out of Roseville High, absolute game changer, in my opinion. Um, and then Dakari Collins. Um, those two were players that, you know, they're, they're typical tall outside receivers that can take the top off the defense, win 50-50 balls. And um, I think – we'll start with Dakari. I think Dakari is someone who really, really started to show flashes as, um, as the season went along. He transferred in from Clemson, had sort of a slow start to his Wolfpack career, had some injuries that slowed him down in the spring. Um, but he worked his way into the rotation. He earned the staff's trust. And um, he ended up with 14 receptions, but um, he, he still racked up 212 yards and, and a couple of touchdowns. Like he he really started to um, emerge down the back half of last year and um, play more and more snaps and um, had a you know his best game of the season was against UNC where he had three catches for 46 yards and a touchdown. So no, I, I think. Um, Dakari, at this point, it shouldn't be a surprise to Wolfpack fans. Like, if you've been paying attention, he is, like, I think, someone that you can pencil in there as a starting outside receiver. But it's I think it's safe to say that if not starting, he will play a very, very, very legitimate role in the wide receiver room this season. For sure. He came on, you know, interesting. Like, he's had a battle injury. He also just kind of battled himself, kind of proving himself on the field. They talk about not having competitive depth, but he was kind of the guy that – Got shuffled down the depth chart, had to work his way back up throughout the year. He appeared in two of the first seven games last year and then played the final six as a, as a routine guy. He caught a touchdown against Notre Dame, kind of thought maybe he was going to get going, but then didn't play much after that for a while. If you look at his numbers, he played 168 snaps in the last four games of the year. They, they played him a lot. And, and when you look at his numbers, he averaged 15 yards per reception, put up – four or three 40 yard games down the stretch at 40 yards against wake 46 against Carolina with the touchdown and then 44 in the bowl down in Orlando. He's a guy I'm really excited about. He will be in a bigger role this year for sure. I think he will start. I agree with you on that. I don't really see how he wouldn't start at this point um, based on what he's a proven guy in this system toward the end of the year, worked his way, earned it. He's going to have to continue to earn it. This is an offense that you can have yeah, 40 yeah. snaps one game and 12 the next game if the next if the guy behind you starts playing better. So he'll have to earn it throughout the year, but I think going into week one against Western Carolina, we'll see number four change his number. Um, 
out there to start the game. Yeah, and um, he's 6'4", 212. He is a big outside receiver, someone you can trust to just go up and get it. And, um, you know, and if he is, it seems like he is taking these steps that the staff looked um, looked for over the past since he arrived in Raleigh. If that just continues, I think he's someone that will end up playing to his, um, you know, high school ranking where he was, you know, one of the top receivers in the country out of Georgia, a four-star prospect. All right, on the other side, um, we're penciling in Noah Rogers. I mean, he is so talented. If you watch the spring game, that was obvious. Um, just making plays all over the field. I think he is, um, you know, maybe this might be a hot take. I don't know, but I think he's probably the best NFL prospect in the, um, you know, pass catching group just because, you know, I think on three compared him to um, Chris Godwin in of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, Noah is 6'2". Um, you know, I, I don't remember his weight. I'm not 6'2". He's 6'2". <laughs> Noah Rogers is 6'2". <laughs> And um, with game-changing speed, like I, you hear like, all right, he's 6'2", is he a 50-50 ball receiver? No, he can. He has hands like glue. Like I'll, I'll pull up his um, senior year um, highlights while we're talking if you're watching on, um, on YouTube. But um, he, he will just take the top off of a defense, and it's really, really impressive. Um, but you see right there that with that one-handed snag, he will – he has no problem catching, bringing in those 50-50 balls. Um, just a complete receiver. There's a reason Ohio State wanted him out of high school. Really, really bad. He was one of their top wide receiver prospects. He ended up there for a year, decided to come home. Is a major recruiting win for NC State um, to the fact that I think he, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll answer a listener question about him later on in the show, but I have really high expectations for um, Noah Rogers. Noah, um, you weren't around when we were covering his recruitment, but I mean, you know, Noah Rogers, he's someone we were talking about last fall of, Oh man, if he ever decided to transfer, like, man, he'd be a great fit at NC state. Um, what are your impressions of Noah from what you saw in the spring game and what you've heard from the staff? Yeah. This is a guy that I think can definitely change the game. Uh, he's not, he's kind of like a, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe because he's not, Kevin Concepcion in the fact where he does it all. But he's a very electric player, very, very good player. He stood out in the spring game. I think seven receptions led everybody, you know, really looked good out there. I think he'll have a you know big impact on this year. And, and we'll talk about it later, but I could see him leading this team in a receiving category. Probably he receptions. Don't know. Don't quote me on it, but we'll, we'll, we'll fire hot take now. I think he'll lead the team in receptions. Wow. Maybe yards. You had it here first. But retro freshman, he played in a couple of games last year. Or he didn't play. But at Ohio State, you know, we'll see what happens. But I think no Rodgers is a game changer. There's a reason why the program is so happy to have him. There's a reason why they were all over him in the transfer portal. And, hey, there's a reason why he wouldn't come back. One, NC State played really well a year ago with a, with a receiving core that wasn't that great. Now they have a really good receiving core surrounded by him. It's going to be fun to watch, but but Noah Rogers rounds out that that starting group of receivers pretty well as a redshirt freshman. Yeah, and um, you mentioned that he's not necessarily Casey in the way that he does a little bit of everything, but in terms of like what you ask an outside receiver to do, he does do everything. Where mm -hmm. um, you can you know chuck it deep to him on a vertical route. He, I thought, I think he's a pretty good route runner. I think he runs um, routes well in like the intermediate areas, and then you can trust him on screen passes where he has the breakaway speed to make things happen after the catch, the elusiveness to make that happen. Um, you know, it, it's tough to find creative ways to praise a five-star recruit. He is a, just across the board, a really, really good football player. Expectations are super high for him. All right, let's go into the backup category. Let's start in the slot. Let's talk about um, Jonathan Paylor. Um, he is my pick to be the backup slot receiver this year. Um, that is because he is one of the most impressive high school prospects I have ever scouted in person. Um, this is actually his junior season tape because he didn't put out senior year tape. Um, senior year was even better than this. So just keep that in mind. Um, he is someone that in the, at the high school level, they used him as a running back and, um, in the slot. So played a couple of different roles at NC state. I see him playing in the slot. 
I, I think he will be able to do pretty much everything that Kevin Concepcion does. I don't say that lightly. I don't think there's many people in America that can do what um, KC does. I think Jonathan Paler is one of those guys. Um, you know, just incredibly elusive, super strong for a high school wide receiver and super, super fast. Clocked a 100-meter um, dash in the 10 threes this year. Um, just legitimate track speed. And um, if, if you don't get a hand on him in the box, then he's gone and you're not going to be able to catch him. Um, NC State beat out pretty much every major program in the country for his commitment. And there's a reason why. It's because um, of that game-changing athleticism. And uh, he was just a huge recruiting win for the pack last year. Um, Noah, he's going to have to compete. Like He's not just going to walk on and get handed that um, – backup slot receiver job you have um a guy like Jalen Coit who will battle him for that spot I think it's actually sneakily one of the better um, position battles for um fall camp but uh I mean you watch these highlights man it's tough not to be blown away right for sure and you know it's kind of you know, reminiscent of, of Kevin Concepcion the way he can run the ball the way he can catch the ball the way he can do it all in the backfield and, and you look at his numbers from high school I mean last year 2300 rushing yards with yeah. 30 touchdowns, 25 receptions, 381 yards. He, he can do it all, and, and it's going to be fun to watch. Alleviate some pressure off KC if he comes in the game. Can do a lot of the same things that KC did a year ago as that halfback kind of hybrid guy. Um, but, yeah, you're right. This isn't going to be an easy job for him to win. Jalen Coit is a capable receiver. Jalen Coit also stuck around for a reason, too. If he didn't think he could win his job, does he stay? Who knows? But a lot of guys left looking for, for opportunities to play elsewhere. And they did, but he stuck it out. Well, let's just talk about him later, but I'll see him see him as the as the punt returner again this year, just just being that guy. But overall, Jonathan Baylor is just an impressive talent. Um, you know, earlier this year I wrote I went three freshmen can make an impact right away, and, and he was on the list. Another one was also on the list, we'll talk about in a second. But I mean, five nine, but man, he can fly and he's gonna be fun to watch. And as you said, track speed, he's a track star. He didn't enroll for spring practice so he could run track. There's a reason why, and, and he's yep. just so good, so good, and he's going to be fun to watch. He's going to be running track at NC State, too. He'll be sprinting for the Wolf Pack. So two sports star, and, um, yeah, you watch these highlights, and it's easy to see why everyone is so excited about his potential. Um, he arrived on campus in June, um, mid-June. He was a summer enrollee. And, you know, for me personally, Noah, like it's – I'm almost never going to – tab a summer enrollee freshman as an instant contributor that's just really hard i mean you're only on campus for a couple of months before um, your first game i think paler is um definitely talented enough to contribute immediately will he you know be the you know playing the full full playbook i don't know it's that's a tough learning curve when robert and i's offense but i feel like if you're not he's too talented to keep off the field you're going to have some plays in there for him. Maybe he's helping out um, as a returner at points. And um, he will be an instant contributor. If he's not the backup slot receiver by the start of the season, I think he definitely will be by the end of the year. All right, let's run through these um, outside receivers um, fa fairly quickly because, no, we're kind of going long here on the podcast. Yeah, let's do it. But um, backup outside receivers. Um, one of them I feel really, really good about saying Wesley Grimes will be the other backup wide receiver. Um, pl another playmaker out of the transfer portal from Wake Forest, 20 receptions for 339 yards and four touchdowns, um, averaging 17 yards per reception. Another elite recruit out of um, the Raleigh area. He um, was a borderline five-star prospect and um, just a really, really good football player. Um, went to Wake Forest, played a role of, you know, very, very um, significant role in their offense last season. Um, and he's going to come to NC State and do the same thing. Uh, I think him, Dakari, and Noah will be competing for those outside receiver spots. And, um, you know, is, again, another guy who I think he is maybe a little similar to Dakari in the way that he is going to win a lot of 50-50 balls. He's a good guy to just throw it up to. But, um, you know, he has the, the legit speed to, you know, you see him in the spring game break off a super, super long touchdown pass or reception. Um so, optimistic about him. Um, Noah, why don't you run us down on the person we're expecting to start on the other side of him, a former top 100 recruit, Terrell Anderson. Yeah, Terrell Anderson, he, there's, you know, the highest rated wide receiver 
in 20 years to, to pick NC State. Number nine in the country from in on three's rankings. He's a guy who Georgia came after, and the NC State was able to hold him off. Um, you know, from Grimsley down in Greensboro, 64 receptions, 100, 1,114 yards, 14 touchdowns last season as a senior. He also had seven kickoff returns, too, for, you know, an average of 39.7 yards. So he's a capable return man, could be in the mix to be in the kickoff return team as well this year. But overall, this guy is an elite talent, and I expect to see him on the field at some point this year, um, as that he'll probably be a primary backup to one of the outside receivers, as, as we mentioned. And we'll see him mix his way in. He's the kind of guy that's just too good to keep off the field, even as a freshman. Do I see him redshirting? I don't think so. I think I think he'll play in, in, in more than four games and, and make an impact in more than four games. Just a guy that is an instant contributor for this team as a freshman. Yeah, he's someone that um, it sounds like he took huge step forward, steps forward as spring practice went along. And, I mean, that's kind of what you expect from him, right? Like, he dealt with the early college learning curve, and now he's ready to, you know, get things going because he is so talented. At his size, at six foot three, he moves extremely well, great hands, super fast, and um, just a good route runner too. Like, I, it's easy to see why, um, you know, Charles Power and the rest of that rankings team at on three, um, you know, ranked him so highly and considers him such a great prospect. Uh, the opportunity for early playing time was a huge reason why he picked the Wolf Pack. The opportunity to earn that, and um, I think he has, or is going to earn that during fall camp, and um, will play a very legitimate role. I agree, and could be a future star for the Wolf Pack. All right, um, we are going to talk about why we're both optimistic for the most part about this wide receiver group. But um, before we do that, I want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Game Time. Game time is a ticket buying and selling marketplace, whether you're looking for tickets to NC State's home opener or a Durham Bulls game or a concert, a comedy show, literally anything you can think of. Game time has it. You can find game time on any app store just by searching up game time or you can find it on your web browser at gametime.co. That's not .com. That would be .co. So go check it out. Um, right now I'm looking at tickets for a Durham Bulls game. And my favorite part about it, Noah, is when I get on the app, you can see exactly where the view from your seat that you'd be purchasing. I'll hold it up for those watching on YouTube. But you can see if you purchase this seat, that's where you'd be sitting. It's nice. Takes a step out of the ticket buying process, something I can appreciate. Save me a couple minutes out of my day. That's definitely enough incentive to keep me coming back to game time whenever I need a ticket. Um, some incentive for all of you is that when you go and, you know, you pick out your seats in Carter Finley Stadium for the Western Carolina game. Use code Wolfpack when you check out. Any purchase, use code Wolfpack the first time you use game time and um, you'll get $20 off your first purchase. So a great deal. Make um, you know the deal even a little bit better and um, take advantage of um, those great prices and uh, you know easy to use platform on game time. Again, on any app store or on your web browser at gametime.co. All right. If this is your first show, for every position group, we like to give one reason we're optimistic and one reason we're concerned about each position group. Um, Noah, I'm going to start with you. One reason you are optimistic about NC State's wide receiver group is? It's deep. It's probably the deepest position on this team right now. And, and the competitive depth is what we've been talking about all, all podcasts. But it, it's true. It's deep. Well, there's guys we haven't even talked about. There's three freshmen, Keenan Jackson, Christian Zachary, and Tank Boston. Don't expect them to, to play a whole lot this year, but, man, they can push guys in practice. And if they start to surge, NC State's not going to be afraid to put them on the field. So that'll be fun to watch. Overall, though, this is, what, a position that is easily 10 deep, and, and that's something that you don't really see a lot um, that we did, definitely didn't see last year from this position. So that's why I'm excited about it going here in the, in the 2024. Yeah, I mean – I think Keenan Jackson and Christian Zachary probably would have played last year. I, I think that's it's pretty safe to say that. I think they would have contributed. So, um, you know, take that into consideration here. And, um, like, that's how deep this team is. <laughs> They're probably going to redshirt this year. Um, so I, I totally, I'm totally with you. You say you're optimistic about the depth. I'm optimistic about the top-end talent. I mean, dude. You have Kevin Concepcion, an All-American candidate, 
um, without a doubt. Noah Rogers' ceiling is, you know, incredibly high. I don't, I don't know if we've even glimpsed his ceiling yet. Um, he, he, he is a potential pro prospect down the road. And then Dakari Collins, someone who is just on a clear upward trajectory and in past years could have been a number one receiver for NC State, I think, considering the jump I'm expecting him to make this fall. So you take two guys that I think by the end of their career could be two of the best Wolfpack receivers in program history. Yes, my expectations for Noah Rogers are that high. Kevin Concepcion, I think that goes without saying at this point. You had Dakari Collins in there, and it's like, holy crap, man. And, you know, there's like a lot of debate – out there of like you want to build like your um, a lot of like people that are a lot smarter about football than me have been saying that you want to almost build like a receiver room like it's a basketball starting five where you have like different guys who can do different things different body types and that's what they've done a lot of different skill sets in the wide receiver room a lot of different um you know you have Dakari Collins six foot four 200 plus pounds then you have Jonathan Paylor at five nine different skill set different abilities and um with Robert and I, who you're, he, you, he's, he, if, if Robert and I can do anything, Noah, he can get the most out of a unique skill set. And NC State has so many unique skill sets on this team that um, it's just hard to see the offense not being really good this fall, I think. Um, so, yes, I, I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic about this um, wide receiver room. Noah, one reason to be concerned about this room. The experience, um, when you look at this, this group, it, it's not a very experienced group. Kevin Conception is your top receiver. He's a sophomore. He played a ton last year, but one year of college football experience is going to be a lot different than what you see from, from other rooms around the team, around the country. Dakari Collins probably the most experienced guy in the room as a redshirt junior that's going to play a lot. Everyone else is a freshman to a redshirt freshman to a sophomore. So it's going to be interesting. A lot of one- to two-year experienced guys, but – Overall, I think it'll be fine, but that's probably the only cause for concern right now. Just it's young, but that'll probably be okay. Yeah, that's that's my main concern. Um, the only other concern I can really find is um, it's a little more like big picturey. Is that there is only one football? Like this is a great problem to have. Let me preface this, preface my statement by saying that um, great problem to have, but there is only one football. You have a lot of playmakers, a lot of, um, you know, folks that I think expect to be, you know, game changers with the Wolf Pack. And you're going to have to find ways to get all of them involved. But like we've said earlier in the show, this isn't going to be one receiver taking up a third of the production, most likely at least. Right. Like I, I think it's going to be way more balanced and, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how those targets get distributed and, if they can keep everyone happy because um, there is a lot of talent in that room. Luckily with the amount that, you know, Robert and I likes to throw the ball with the amount that I, I think we saw last year, the way he did rotate a ton of guys um, it's going to be similar, but I think that rotation is just going to be like three, four leaps better than it was last year. So that's my only concern really aside from, you know, just the experience. But um, again, you know, these first three podcasts, we've been so optimistic, but, um, and don't worry, we'll, we'll express our, like, maybe more serious concerns about other position groups. But I think, you know, as far as quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, they're stacked. This should, the offense should look night and day compared to the past couple of years. All right, we're going to wrap up today's show by answering a few listener submitted questions. Um, if you're interested in submitting a question, um, go to thewolfpacker.com. It's only $1 to join. We have a message board thread for this every week. If we don't answer it on the podcast, we'll answer it in the mailbag. All right. Our first question. Um, how much playing time in the slot do you see Paler playing behind KC? Any options where you get both of them on the field? Yes. Um, there will absolutely be um, sets where you see both Paler and KC on the field because you can line them up anywhere. That's the best part about both of them is you can put them in the backfield. You can put them in an H back role. You can put them in the slot. Um, you can put KC outside sometimes. Um, I think one of my favorite plays of the season, Noah, was when they put um, uh, like KC out wide against Clemson. If you the far side of the field from our, the press box and um, they got him on the outside 
And it was just a simple slant route because they were playing off coverage on him. And if you you get KC that much space, see ya. And it was a long touchdown, game-changing play in that game against the Tigers. And, um, yeah, so there's definitely going to be times where you line them up both on the field. I, I have, um, you know, it in my head of in the spring game, they were running through these formations where you'd have, you know, Jordan Waters and KC in the backfield. And then I forget who they would have, like, in the slot at that point. But imagine, Noah, you do that, and you have, you know, Jordan Waters, KC in, in the back row, and then you put Jonathan Taylor in the slot. I mean, that's just a lot of speed, a lot of talent um, there around the line of scrimmage. So um, big fan of how that could work out. I think they're going to be um, very, very good together in addition to spelling each other so neither player has to take that much of a workload. Um, Noah, do you want to take the second question here? Um, what kind of production do you see coming from Noah Rogers this year? Yeah, I represent, I think he's going to be one of the best receivers on the team. I think, you know, there's a chance he leads it in receptions. If no receptions, I think yards are on the table being this yeah. outside guy that can get downfield. Um, uh, but these guys have a big impact. I see it from game one, definitely going to need him in game two against Tennessee and Charlotte. Um, and then from there, it's just going to go, you know, however the season goes, goes, but, this is a guy I think NC State hopes from a lot from, and you know, I think there's there's some good reason to, to have this much expectation of what the hometown kid has to offer playing his first year at NC State. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you touched on our third question here, so we're both we're both going to answer this one. Um, someone asked, "Who will lead the team in receptions, yards, and TDs?" Let's each give our answer. Um, and then give like a you know, 10 second explanation on each person. Noah, who's leading the team in receptions? We'll go, I'll go, okay. I'll go Casey leads in receptions. That's, that's what we'll go. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. Casey leads the team in receptions um, just because they like to get the ball in his hands in so many different ways. Does, would I be shocked if he has less receptions than he did um, last year? No, not at all. I would not be surprised if the numbers go down a little bit, but I think, you know, the yards and the touchdowns could stay the same or go up for him. Um, for receiving yards, um, I'm kind of with you, man. I, I'll, I'll go with um, Noah Rogers if you want to here. We, we could go – let's go for Noah Rogers. For, um, let's, let's go for the, the Ohio State transfer. We'll put him here. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I think in terms of, like, yards per reception, I think he'll lead the team. Um, by like, I wouldn't be surprised at a decent margin just because I think he's going to be a dynamic deep threat. And, um, you know, he's explosive when he, after the, he gets the ball in his hands as well. So yeah, let's pick no Rogers here. Breakout season from him. Maybe lands himself on an all ACC team. Um, TDs. I'm going to go with the man that scores in Paris. Kevin Concepcion. <laughs> it's just mathematically speaking, if you score, more than one touchdown. Every time you score a touchdown, you're going to lead the team. He had 10 <laughs> last year, led the team. Let's go with him. Kevin Concepcion will lead the team in receptions and receiving touchdowns. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm i with you there. Um, I'll tease our next episode by um, putting just, you know, tossing out there that I think it could be Justin Jolie out, out of the tight end spot. But more on him next week when we break down NC State's flex Y and tight end rooms on the next episode of the Wolf Packer show. Um, that's all from today's episode, folks. Thank you all for um, watching and listening. I um, really appreciate it. And thank you for um, the huge support for our preview shows so far. We really appreciate everyone tuning in and um, it's going to be a fun season. We're excited to preview it all before um, the action really gets started here in, um, in about a month or two. So next week, we're going to be previewing the tight end room and then the offensive line Two big rooms with question marks and um, exclamation points. So we're excited to break those down. A lot of content on both position groups coming on the wolfpacker.com. So go check it out. One more plug. It is only $1 to join the site right now. All right. Thank you all. And we will see you next week.